Sometime within 48 hours after this video goes public, the title will automatically change to reveal how much money I made for making this video. But the money isn't actually what's important here. It's the risk. Now, this part is a vintage bottle opener that was likely attached to an old cooler, or something like this from Coca-Cola, or maybe one similar to it. Now, the simple repair on this job is to weld it up in exchange for pay based on the service provided. It's really as simple as business can get, right? I do this job for you, you give me money. Now, I've never repaired a stamped steel vintage bottle opener before, but my understanding here is that I was recommended by other local businesses to take on this job, and it might have something to do with them not wanting to assume the risk. After all, the customer did seem a little nervous or apprehensive when dropping it off. But he did have it all prepped up, he specified the process that he wanted for the repair, in this case it was TIG, and he insisted that all the finished work be done by him. Essentially just make a weld that doesn't completely destroy this part. Now the risk for me on this part is that I only get one shot to make this weld. So I definitely want to make sure that I get this right, starting with taking good measurements. Now this gauge tool has the part measuring at about 18 gauge on the untouched surfaces and 20 gauge on the prepped surfaces. The gap is measuring somewhere between 18 and 16 gauge thickness, and the length is about 3 quarters of an inch. Welding thin metal is not too difficult for me, but the gap is a bit of a concern. I want to make sure that the bead itself not only connects the two sides together, but also doesn't shrink the part when it solidifies. Welding with an air gap will most definitely cause shrinkage of this part, and seeing as how it's so thin on the prepped edges, it also has an extremely high probability of blowing out. So I'm going to use a very simple trick to avoid all of that, copper backing. Now I'm setting up a mock joint to practice on before I jump on the part itself. These coupons from WeldMetalsOnline.com are a perfect way for me to practice. I'll first lay down a copper coupon, followed by two 20 gauge carbon steel coupons set to the same gap width as the part. My filler is ER70S-2 in 045 diameter, and I'm using a FUPA 12 cup set to about 30 CFH. The Prime Weld TIG 225 is set to 55 amps on the pedal, and I'm using 332nd laser tungsten because it welds every metal on any machine ever made, and it's extremely precise at low amp welding. Now, if you would like to save on your next order at WeldMetalsOnline.com, use my code TFS10 at checkout. I'm trying out two different welding techniques on this mock joint here. The first is a traditional dabbing method. You build up a pool on the edges, you add the filler, you move forward, repeat. The second method is a lay wire technique. I'll place the filler in the middle of the joint, move the arc over it, increase the amps with my foot pedal, watch the metal blend, move forward, and repeat. So kind of based on this, uh, this first weld, which actually was the, the first one that I did, I was, I was dabbing into it. And the dab method worked, but it wanted to spread and run away on that. And I don't want to chase a runaway gap or a runaway bead. So the second one I did, I just laid the filler in there and then just kind of pedal pulsed my way over it, just kind of hitting it a little bit. Um, kind of heavy and just watching it blend in there. And then you can see both of these, we have full pen all the way through. And of course the other sides are, still more than presentable. Uh, they look fine to me, so I think uh, to be safe, I'm gonna actually lay the wire in there and then just kinda hit it relatively heavy, repetitively with the pedal after we add the uh, copper back into the part. So, a little bit of practice, I think I'm good. Let's just go for it. First we cut, then we shape, then we clamp, and then we weld. Gonna have to get a different lens so I can zoom way in on that one. Maxed out on this. Well, um, that seemed easy enough. Let's, uh, let's take a look at the backside. Now, unfortunately, the audio during my commentary kind of sucked because I wasn't wearing my lav mic. But the penetration was full and the weld was solid. But I wanted to make one more pass on the backside so that way the customer had enough metal to grind and finish with. 
Think of it kind of like a safety for him, I guess you could say. So after switching the copper back to the outside, I grabbed some 035 wire and made an inside pass. Unfortunately, it was a little too tight for an arc shot. Yeah, that burned even better through on the front side too, so we are fully penetrated and there's plenty of metal holding everything in place. It might be really hard to see, but I'm going to leave this as is and let the customer refinish it. He seemed to be a little worried about this part and dropping it off, so I'm going to leave it exactly the way that it is and I'm going to let him do the finish work and then when he comes in here and asks me to if I can grind it down lightly, whatever the case is, I will absolutely do it. But as far as this goes, that's just a water weld right there. Let's back up for just a second here. Now, you guys know that I like to reveal my pricing in videos because I know it helps you guys out down the road when you charge your customers. But recently, the haters have been coming in hot with how much they think I make on social media. But the truth is, it's actually hit and miss on how much I make from a video. I mean, some pay nice and others pay very small. And it's not much different than running a business. Sometimes you get a big job and other times you get a small job. And that's the risk you take when you get into this game. So I had an idea to hire a software engineer to write me some fancy code that automatically updates the title with the current revenue earned from this video before taxes. Now, I may lose money on this since uh, I actually had to pay the engineer more than what I made on this job, but for the haters, it's a risk I'm willing to take. But as far as this goes, that's just a $20 weld right there. <laughs> 